Hello, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work here. Today I'm going to show you how I painted these snowy mountains using a paintbrush and a palette knife. I started off with some reference photos that I took myself of the ranges at the back of our house. And I did a few small colour sketches to start off with. and tried different compositions until I decided I was ready to do my final version which was this one here so let's get into it and I'll show you how I painted those snowy mountains So first off I'm going to show you how I made this colour here and then I'm going to show you how I made the colour string with three different colour tones of the same colour and how I built up the mountains from those three colours to start with. I'm going to mix the dark colour for the mountain ranges. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, permanent alizarin yellow ochre and I've got some tinting white here but first of all I'm going to mix the darkest colour so I'm getting the ultramarine blue and I'm going to make a dull purple by mixing some of the alizarin in there this darkens up that ultramarine blue And then I'm going to grey it down a little bit with the yellow ochre. So if you put too much yellow ochre in it, it'll go green. And then you just add some more red in to bring it back to that dark grey. I want a bluey grey, so I'm going more towards the blue than a neutral grey. So that would be my darkest colour. So I set some of that aside. And then I can just add some white. And I'll put a little bit more of the red in there to warm it up a bit more. That will make my next tone. Then I can add some more white. You see, you don't need a lot of dark in the white. So that's why I put most of it aside to get your light tones. And it doesn't matter if it's a bit streaky, because it all helps with variation. And that gives me my three tones, my dark, my medium and my light for my mountains. First off I've drawn the mountain shape and because I'm drawing an actual mountain range and this mountain range can be seen quite easily from where my gallery is so people will look at my painting and look at the mountain range I'm trying to be pretty accurate in the line of my mountains so I've drawn them in quite carefully and I'm going to be using a mixture of a brush and a palette knife 
for painting the snowy mountains on here. So I find I've watched a few different ways of doing it with the brush and different ways of doing it with just the palette knife. And I find for me a mixture of both works best. Because when I just use a brush, I get a bit fiddly with it and it loses that spontaneous kind of feel. And if I just use the palette knife, I can't get the shapes that I need to make the mountain range look like the real mountain range. So I use a mixture of both. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how I do the mountain, the snowy mountains on here. So first of all, I'm going to do in the sky and I'm just going to use a mixture of ultramarine blue and white and then as we come down I'll add some phthalo blue and more white and fade it out and that'll just be the first coat. So I'll quickly do that and then I'll show you what I do first for the mountain range. So now I've got the sky in, I'm going to go in and do a base for my mountains and I'm going to go in with my mid-range colour of my grey blue that we made earlier. This is just a number 10 flat brush and I'm going to just be quite careful about the shape on this particular mountain range because as I said before it's an actual mountain range and I want to make sure that people will be able to recognise which mountain it is. since they can look out the window and look at it. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to paint the whole mountain range along the top there in my mid-range colour. Now I'm looking at this now and I can see I want this one to be my main focus and I can see I've gone too high on this side when I was drawing it so I'm actually going to make that one a bit lower and I'll come down with more sky on there. Now I'm going to get some of my dark and I'm just going to block in where my dark is going to go just for a, a guideline so that I know where that's going to be. And I don't mind if it mixes in with some of that lighter colour because I am going to come back with dark with the palette knife and do some of that there. But I just don't want to lose my drawing so I know what I'm doing. making sure that I've covered all the canvas Now I'm going to bring in some light and I'm going to do a line of light through here. I just missed a dark piece there so I'm just going to quickly do that.
Now I'm going to bring in the light, and that'll be the like the misty fade out at the bottom of the mountains. So that's just my general blocking done. Now I'm going to let that dry and I'll, I'll fill in the sky but up there as well and I'll let that dry and then come back with the palette knife and do the next piece. So while that's drying I'm going to go ahead and block in the rest of the hills here and these are a different colour because they're a lot lower down and they're not all grey and snowy. So I've just gone through with some chalk and marked where my highlights are going to be for my lightest areas. Just to give me some guidelines and now I'm going to use my palette knife. And I'm going to get some of the darkest colour that I mixed of this grey blue. Stick it on my plate. And then I'm just going to get my palette knife and I'm going to smooth it out a bit. And I'm just going to get a bit on there. And then where the darkest areas are, with a very light touch. I'm just going to go through and put in those darkest areas. What I like about the palette knife is that it gives you some really spontaneous, some predictable kind of results, which looks more natural to me than doing it all with the brush. And sometimes I'll use it up and down like this. And sometimes I'll do it sideways. So where I've put the chalk lines, I know that there's going to be a highlight coming through here. So then it helps me know where to put those darks in. So these are all the little dark rocks that are sticking out of the snowy areas and also in the shadow areas of the mountains. And it doesn't matter if I get a little bit too much on there at times because I'm going to be putting lots of layers of different colours to build up that snowy effect. And I'm looking at my reference picture as I go.
I'm thinking about the direction of how the mountains are going. Okay, so that's my darks in there, and now I'm going to let that dry before I go in and do any more. Now I'm still using that same colour that I've used all along, so first of all I used the, the mid-tone and then I used the darkest, and now I'm going to use a lighter tone, and I've just added more white into it so it's lighter than this mid-tone colour and I'm going to put in the lightest areas where I want them to be this won't be the lightest colour paint that I use this is like the base coat of the, the light and I'm following where I've put my chalk And I'm also refer referencing my photo so I know where I want to put those lightest colours. And you can see with the palette knife how it gives it that broken up look that we can build up to make it look like that snow is just dusting the mountain there. So one thing you've got to watch out for is you don't want to get lots of straight lines because I don't want my mountain to just be a triangle because that looks really unnatural for this mountain range. If your mountain looks like a triangle in real life then that's fine but this one doesn't so I don't want lots of straight up and down lines. So I'm moving my palette knife in different ways to get different lines so they're not all going the same way and I'm using a very light touch and as it gets less paint on it I'm working my way down the mountain where there's less snow so I want the most snow at the top of the mountain. So when I first load up my palette knife, I'm using it at the top of the mountain. And then as I get less paint, I'll work my way down the mountain where there'll be less snow. And I'm following the contours of the mountain with my palette knife so when the snows the contour of the mountain goes this way I'm using it this way when it's going this way I'm using it the strokes this way and that all helps to give it that three-dimensional feel to it And I'm thinking about which planes of the mountain go in front of the other planes of the mountain. What, what's behind and what's in front. So that base coat that we've put on is peeking through and just helping with the depth of the mountain, building up the rock shapes. I might have trouble doing this side without getting in the way of the camera. And 
And sometimes I'm just using the tip to get the edges of the mountain where it meets the sky. And sometimes I'm using the whole flat of the knife. So the main thing is you just experiment a bit before you start to see what you can do with the palette knife. And you can always come back and put in more darks and more lights at any time. Now I know that I want this area here to be my main focus of interest. So this is going to be where my darkest darks are and my lightest lights are. So some of this light here that is not going to be my lightest light but it's more like my my base light if you like I know that I'm going to have a lot more of that color on the sides showing through And I quite like the unpredictable nature of the palette knife. You're never quite sure exactly what you're going to get. And although I want this to be a very realistic looking mountain range, I don't mind if there's a bit of variation here and there in the middle of the range there. I've just got a bit of paint on the edge of my brush there and I'm just doing the ridges coming down from the mountain. And I've seen a few tutorials on using the palette knife and they say you know, wipe your, br your palette knife in between every time you load up and things but I'm too lazy to do that so I don't actually do that unless there's a particular area that I want to have very carefully done. What I like about this is that it gives that spontaneous feel it's not very carefully done because that's something in my painting that I'm always striving to get away from being so fiddly because Naturally, I want to fiddle and use little brushes, so I try and use bigger brushes, especially in the beginning parts, and, and little tricks like the, using the palette knife to get me away from getting too fiddly, because I personally I think that when you get too detailed and too fiddly in things like a landscape, especially things in the distance, it doesn't look natural, it looks forced. So I think that's looking pretty good at the moment and again I'm going to leave this to dry before I do the next part. Okay, now this is all dry I'm just going to go back into the main mountain here and I'm going to reinstate a few of these darkest bits. Because when I go over with some more light later we'll lose a lot of them and I just want a few of them peeking out. You can see how much darker the paint 
dries from when it's wet when it's dry it looks really almost black on here but this is actually exactly the same color that I'm using now So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance this misty look at the bottom of the mountain here. So I'm going to get some of my lightest colour, this colour that I used here. So this colour here. And I'm just going to get my clear painting medium. And I'm going to mix some of that in with some of that lightest colour. So I've just mixed some of that with the clear painting medium and I'm just using a number 12 full bit brush here just because I don't want any hard lines on there. As you can see it's quite see through the clear mate painting medium makes it into a glaze. And I'm just going for that kind of misty look at the bottom of the mountain. I can just use my finger to get out any hard lines at the top there. So the first thing I've done is I've added a little bit of the alizarin crimson into this lighter mixture here. And so they're very much nearly the same tone, but it's just slightly more purplish. And so this is going to be for the shadow side of the snow. So I'm my light's coming in this way. So I'm just adding a bit of this on the sides that would be more in the shadow. And it's because this side will be more in the shadow than this side. I'm going to add some of it onto this side of the mountain. So that's the shadow side of the snow and now I'm going to add a lighter side to the snow. So I'm going to use this sky colour here but slightly lighter. So that was made with the phalo blue and some white and just a little touch of ultramarine blue. So there's the colour that I've made. 
It's the same colour as the sky there, just a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put that on where the highlights are going to be. The sunny side there. And a little bit on this side of the shady side of this mountain. This is where the snow is reflecting the colour of the sky. And this colour will be my main highlight on this shadowy side of the mountain. And now I'm going to go even lighter and I'm just going to use my tinting white here. Yeah, so I've dried that off and now I've just got the tinting white on its own on my palette knife and I'm going to do the parts that are the lightest but this is still not the final bit of the snow the final highlight the tinting white isn't quite as opaque and as white as the titanium white So this is the first step of white really. So I'm getting an idea of where that white snow is going to be and shaping the mountain as I go. And I'm just putting it where I think the sun would be hitting this mountain if it's coming from this direction and I've got my other examples next to me so that I can see what I'm doing in my reference photos I use the tip of my knife quite a lot when I'm doing this so I've got more control about where the colour is going. As each layer you want a little bit more control and I'm doing a little less of each layer. So the first layer we went all over and then the dark we did quite a bit and then the light, this light colour here little bit less than the dark and then the purple a little bit less more a little bit less again and the blue a little bit less again so each time we're going a little bit less so some of that colour from underneath is showing through each time and it just makes for really interesting snow and shows how the light is bouncing around off it in the sun just makes it a bit more interesting than just doing a very plain coloured snow and I think it gives it a bit more of that three-dimensional feel to it
I'm going to get a very pale yellow. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use my cadmium yellow medium and a very tiny bit of that with mixed in with my tinting white and then I'm going to put that on my very sunlit areas. So, I'm going to, so I've added a tiny bit of yellow into that tinting white and made a very pale yellow and then when you put it on it shows up it's just the little sunshine shining on there. So I'm just highlighting little areas. Where the sun's going to be shining on there. You can see some places I'm just only really touching the canvas with it. I'm not putting very much at all on. I want most of the focus to be around this area. And then I'm going to dry that off. So now I'm going to move on to my titanium white, which is the, a much more opaque clear white. See if I can show you the difference. Okay. In this one here is the tinting white, and in this one here is the titanium white. So you can see how much more white the titanium white looks compared to the tinting white. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the tinting white on the brightest parts of my mountain. As I said before, each layer gets a little less than the layer before, so you can see what's going on underneath. The little bits of the underneath will be poking through. Just adding to the whole effect. Just little bits where I want the lightest lights to go, where the sun's really shining on it. I got a bit blobby in here, so I can just go back with a different colour. I'm going to use my um, first colour, my base coat colour. 
and I can just put some more on there. And I can even get some of my dark and just blob it around. And because the paint is still wet, you're getting some interesting mixing going on there, which is making some nice patterns. I'm just going to put a little bit more the lighter colour in there. And you can go backwards and forwards. I'm putting a bit more of that blue in the top there. So if you find you've lost some of your colours and you want to just add a little bit in, then that's no problem. And it's fun to do, so it's easy to um, play a bit too much. So you do have to stop yourself at some point and say, okay, that's enough. You know, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of yellow back in just some of those little top bits. And I'm going to say that that mountain is done. Now I can go ahead and paint the rest of this painting. And when I've finished all the painting, then I'll come back and see, have I got enough highlights? Is my main central focus got enough contrast? When it's all finished, I'll be able to see that. But that's how you paint a snowy mountain in acrylic paint using the brush and a palette knife. So if you like this video, then please like and subscribe. So here's the painting all finished now. Now once I did the mountains and the foreground, I did do a little bit more on the mountains. And what I did was I just added a little bit more blue into this side of the mountain. And I faded out some of these because they were looking a bit too much the same, like a repeated pattern. But that's all the extra things I did. And you can see on the close-up all the different colours that we use, that the yellow and the blues and the purples and the light and the dark of that colour string and how it makes for a really interesting looking picture. So have a go at some snowy mountains using palette knife. They're actually really easy to do and fun and get a really amazing results. And people will say, wow, how did you paint that? But it's actually not as hard as it looks. So have a go and happy painting.